6% of all breast cancers are due to the genes which run in your families. Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Bhuvan Chug. I'm a breast cancer medical oncologist and I work at Max Hospital Saket and Max Hospital Rotorong. Today I'm going to talk about the genes which predispose an individual to breast cancer. Now, these genes are usually BRCA1, BRCA2, PALV2, CHECK2 and ATM genes. All of these genes have a certain predisposition to cause breast cancers, which may be high risk, intermediate or low risk. Not all of these genes are pathogenic. That means even if you have a gene and if you have a mutation in one of these genes, not all the mutations are going to be pathogenic. What we are really concerned in oncology are pathogenic or likely pathogenic variants of these genes. Now, what we need to understand is that the most common of these genes are called as BRCA1 and BRCA2, which on an average are associated with somewhere around 60 to 70 percent lifetime risk of breast cancer. Not only the breast cancer, there are other cancers such as ovarian cancer, pancreatic and prostate in males, which are associated with these genes. Now, that is a very blanket statement in itself. What, as an individual, you should be concerned about is what is my individual risk rather than what is my average risk. Now, why is that important? See, whenever you are planning to intervene, whenever you're planning to take a decision whether I need to undergo a certain surgery which reduces my risk or whenever I'm going to screen extra to prevent or to cause, uh, to basically de early detect this cancer, it is rather important to understand what is the individual risk. That individual risk depends on multiple factors. Obviously, one of them is the genes which you carry or the variants of the particular gene which you're carrying. The others is what is the familial risk of it? What is the familial, what is the risk of breast cancer in your family? So for example, if you have a BRCA positive gene and you do not have a family history, the average lifetime risk can reduce to 50% and it can increase to 70% if you have two or more members in your family who have the cancer. So it's rather important to understand that not all BRCA1 and BRCA2 genes are associated with the same degree of risk in cancer. The other rather very, very important risk or contribution to the risk is by the lifestyle factors. Now, what is generally believed and rather it is one of the most common asked to us in the common question asked to us in the clinic is what caused this? Now, it is usually a mixture of the factors and even if you have one of these cancer causing genes, it's your lifestyle factors which contribute to it. For example, if you are a smoker, if you have a high BMI, if you have unhealthy eating habits, you have a sedentary lifestyle, this also contributes to your breast cancer despite you having the BRCA1 or a BRCA2 or a PALB2 gene. So all of this particularly gives you your individual risk and that's what defines the process moving forward. So what you're supposed to do is, before you take a certain decision and before you, you know, get stressed over it, Meet an oncologist. We have various online tools. Some of them can be simple, such as BRCA calculators from the Stanford University, or it can be a, a complex calculator called this CanRisk. So, which factors in most of your most of these things, which kind of gives you an individual score. Now, what is to be done if you have a high risk? See, please understand that. To undergo a risk reduction surgery is a very, very personal and emotional decision. And you, for one, should have all the information before you do it. So always have a discussion with your oncologist to understand what is a risk reduction surgery entails, what is going to be removed, how it is going to be reconstructed, what is the complications which I'm looking at, because whatever you do, the complications even in the best of the hospitals are up to 10%. What is the type of reconstruction you're going to look at? All these questions are important to be asked. The other very important factor is screening. The screening helps us to detect the cancers early. The queen of screening is an annual MRI for the breast. So if you're concerned about breast cancer, an annual MRI is the queen. You do not need an ultrasound for, you know, if you're doing an annual MRI. And this annual MRI starts at the age of 25. So the rule is no screening or no imaging before 25. And beyond 25, it's an annual MRI. And especially and only those for people who have a more than 20 to 30 percent 
lifetime risk of developing cancers annual mammogram are not to be done before 30 years that there is too much radiation exposure again if you carrying a BRCA1 gene it's usually twice twice a year or twice annually for anything BRCA2 or any other gene once once a year is good enough so to summarize it what i wanted to say is understand what genes you carry understand the individual risk per se meet an oncologist person who specializes in breast cancer because this area is very niche to understand what is my individual risk and this individual risk is not a relative risk as to the general population what is the absolute risk of breast cancer i'm carrying and what are the steps that i need to take forward to screen and to detect this cancer early and then if there is a need to a risk reduction surgery what does it entail how much do i need to do what lifetime of survival advantage is it giving me and how do i take it from there what is the what is the reconstruction i'm looking at we usually have a group of surgeons along with us who help us define these things thank you subscribe to our youtube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest healthcare updates